<laughs> How are you, Vicky? Very good, thank you. Good, good, good. good Very nice to be here, thank God. Thank you so much uh, for joining us uh, during this broadcast. Let us ask one of our Reverend Deacon to read that is the Reverend Deacon Victoria. Let her read to us the lesson appointed for this particular worship service. My name is the Most Reverend Idika Aymerai. I am an Archbishop of the Church and I want to thank you for praying for all of us who have this burden of telling the story and doing the work that goes with the story of the Bible, of Christ Jesus himself. I want you to continue to support us by your money contribution. Now, this is some of the things that I do. Um, one of our YouTube channels is called Focus on Happiness, and that's what we are doing right now. We have the other ones that are focused on, they are focused on medicine, money, and technology. I want to thank you for coming to join us once again. Vicky. I lift up the Holy Bible to heaven, and I kiss it. Mark chapter 6, verse 1 through 13. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then he went out from there and came to his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue and many hearing him were astonished saying where did this man get these things and what wisdom is this which is given to him that such mighty works are performed by his hands is this not the carpenter the son of Mary and brother of James Joseph, Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? So they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his own country among his own relatives and in his own house. Now he could do no mighty works there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Then he went out about the villages in a circuit teaching and he called the twelve to himself and began to send them out two by two and gave them power over unclean spirits. He commanded them to take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bag, no bread, no copper in their money belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. Also, he said to them, in whatever place you enter a house, stay there till you depart from that place. 
And whoever will not receive you, nor hear you, when you depart from there, shake off the dust under your feet as a testimony against them. Assuredly, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for Saddam and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. So they went out and preached that people should repent. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil those who were sick and anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My own experience as a priest and as a prelate of the church, as a prince of the church, is that I came into holy orders. I came into church mission job I came into it as a boy. I was one of all the youngest during among my group that went to seminary. And that means that I had little or no experiences about how life truly is practiced on planet Earth. So you, you now can wait for yourself that what really inspires people to seek job of power, job that gives them control or dominion over human beings wasn't what motivated me. It wasn't money. It was not to be in charge. It was to serve. With that kind of attitude that I've had, it was difficult for me when I saw church politics it injured me and traumatized me that I, I almost abandoned being a priest after I became one. It took someone like Archbishop the Most Reverend Dr. Omar Ogunta to to shape me, to form me, to let me be aware of standing firm in my primary vocation. That's why I call him boss. Because the the town folk or city folk or country folk, the community in which Jesus was, grew up or was born, where he practiced the art of being or the job of being a carpenter. 
they knew him. Even John the deepest son of Zachariah and Elizabeth did not fully make sense of who Jesus was. So there was that disparity and ambiguity of vocation in the life of John the deepest or you guys call him John the Baptist. People did not understand how a carpenter became a rabbi. Where did he go to school? How who formed him? How did he know so much about the testimony of old, the Old Testament, the Psalms, the prophets? Remember that the gospel was not written, neither the epistles, neither the other New Testament books. How did he acquire the power to cast out demons, heal people of various ailments through different methods, performing miracles of multiplication, turning water into wine, five loaves of bread and two fishes, and fed thousands of people? How? Where did he acquire his power? God is truly a remarkable present, presenter of human beings through alternative method. He is good at bringing you from a different side instead of sometimes from the side that is always the treasured paths, the ancient path that we are all familiar with. Sometimes the best of medical doctors and scientists, people in tech, the giants of human development and progress and civilizations, leaders and rulers, Many a times, the rich and the mighty do not always come from mighty and rich foundations. Sometimes they don't come from the normal way. Sometimes it will be someone that we don't hear his or her name. We've never heard about them before and they've been struggling for years and focus on one thing over and over and over and then boom one day they hit success and the whole world celebrates their achievements without knowing the burden that they have to go through and the stress behind the scene i truly acknowledge that jesus studied because he said he used to go to the temple to read scriptures, to memorize scriptures, to pray. So he was remarkably a religious man, a spirit-filled human being who truly loved what God has done, which is even himself. In the days of old, and remarkably in the present time of his time. So he actually started in the temple. We read of him when he was young asking powerful questions. And the learned rabbis and priests were astonished at the way he presented the Torah.
the readings, the devotions, the prayers, the prophecies. They were astonished at it. But he went into the temple, to the synagogue, and read. So after doing his carpentry work, he went in to read, to study. So why were they wowed at who he was? The point is, familiarity brings contempt. Mm. They knew him. You, you, you heard of it now. They knew his brothers and sisters. So that tells us that Mary wasn't immaculate conception. He was not ever virgin. She, she was not ever virgin. She wasn't. So they knew much about him. They had no respect for him. They belittled him, disrespected him, mocked him, made fun of him, spoke ill of him, and the work that the Holy Ghost was doing through him. And the work that God the Father was doing through him. They mocked it. To the extent that he couldn't do no mighty works there. Now let's touch it down right here. Do not spend one more day. One more second. In any location. And with any group of people where your value, your what, what you carry, your purpose, your talents, your giftedness is trampled to the ground. Not taken serious. Not rewarded. Annie of Norway, my wonderful, beautiful girl, speaks she and i speak more of reward samantha and i we speak more of purpose my personal secretary victoria and i we speak more of destiny mary and i mary mary and i we speak more of talents giftedness and discipline V. Gale and I, we speak more of money, investment. The same with Mary Mary. The reason why we come in different classes, shapes, sizes, lifestyle, is so that we can bring something completely unique. Something beautiful, not just something that is different, but something that brings great value. Something that brings money from a different way. Create wealth from a different way and method. We can't all just do the same thing. Pursue the same goal and get paid for the same thing. Ask human beings and ask God Almighty, the Father, Jesus Himself, and the Holy Spirit, and the sons, those who have gone ahead of us, and those of us who are alive, we all constitute the sons of God. Ask for direction in terms of location. Be in the right location. Make sure you are manifesting you are using the right talent the right gift the right discipline i have spent the last one week studying excuse me studying the life and what i sense 
I use the word sense, perceive, open into the life of Kyle of Samantha and the life of Toribio of Mary. Both of them have done 16 at the same time. I'm faced with two teenagers right now who are the same age. And it is my job as a father with two boys that I have to groom. I have to form. I'm not leaving it to the counselors and to the teachers in their high school. It is my job to begin right now, excuse me, to begin right now, to find out. People, this is summer in America, so you have flies, whether you like it or not. There are flies everywhere. That's how it is in summer in America. After a while, next one or two months, you don't see them anymore. Everything disappears because they sense winter is coming. They all go away. So they are only around for just like one or two months. You don't see them anymore. So I'm now faced with two 16-year-old teenagers. Two different women. Two different backgrounds. One is from, Kyle is from St. Lucia, a New Yorker. Toribio is from California. Think about that. And I've been able to look at Carl and know. Carl is going in for medicine, a particular aspect of medicine. But both of them are actually going to study almost the same thing in their undergraduate. One is going to be a family doctor, that's the review. Carl is going to be a baby doctor pediatrics and I've studied both of them and realized that's where they belong it has taken me a few years to prepare for what just happened a few seconds with both of them one I'm grooming one to go to Columbia I'm grooming one to go to Stanford I'm looking now for scholarship for each of them so that the parents can avoid negative stress and accumulation of unnecessary loans. Now I'm working for both of them to have their CNA and CM, uh, CMA. Both of them, they, have, they must have it. They must be in their practice before they go into their practice. They have to. And now I'm also faced with another one. Another, a girl called Daniela. And now faced with another one. I have a daughter of Mary Mary. And then I have another one of Mary Mary. Who will soon be finishing and actually going into medical school. One is going to education. Two days ago, I have to I have to sit with a Kenyan, a Kenyan realtor, and looking at law schools for another teenager that has turned seventeen. Why, I have to form them now. They have to know their location now. It's not when they finish high school we start looking for what are they going to become? What are they going to do? And a lot of them, their parents allow them to sit at home. Nobody knows what they are going to do. Annie, where are you? Where is Annie? I'm here. Good. Annie and I spent two years to come to a compromise 
as to where Marilyn is going. That girl, Annie of Norway, did, had sleepless nights, stress upon stress, not knowing what my daughter Marilyn is going to become. Finally, we agree after high school, after secondary school, she's going to a special school. The payoff has not yet come. It's going to pay off. Because after a while, I'm going to call her, I'm going to call Marilyn, sit her down, and we start discussing location. We start discussing what is natural to her, what is she born with, talents and giftedness, and then what has been formed in her. And as I always said to her, a few years ago, you are going into healthcare. And right now, as I'm talking to all of you, she is into healthcare. She's working in a nursing home. And that is the fourth step. So there are children that you do not need to force things. You have to allow things to force its way and break open, pop out. And then the growth begins. The journey begins. There are people whom the journey will just boom, they're on the run. Others, it goes well in between. Others, it goes slowly. The only thing I will not allow anybody to do to you is to disrespect you. Your personality, your dignity, your honor, and your gift. And for you not to be properly rewarded. And Jesus knows how to do it. And that is what he's teaching us. They offended him. But he was not offended. They took offense at him. He didn't take offense. He, he himself was not offended. Why? He knew himself. And he moved on to do his work elsewhere. Where he is needed. Your job is to pray tonight. And your job is to tell the Holy Spirit, to tell Jesus, to tell God the Father, do not allow me to waste my time where I'm not needed, where I will not be appreciated, where I will not be rewarded, because what you carry is enormous. The power you have is enormous. All you need to do is take the fish that is on the land, take it back to the water, and swipe, swipe, swipe. The genius comes out in the water. Penguins cannot fly. They walk on the land, swim in the water. But science has allowed us to gain entry into the genius of penguins. After comorons, they are some of the they are some of the fastest. Swimmers on earth after comorans. I think so. Penguins actually fly in the water. They don't swim. They actually fly inside the water. That's how powerful they are. Because they are where they belong. You are going to fly. You are going to be at the place of the best of practice. Where nobody will challenge you. Where nobody will dominate you. Where if somebody starts to display, tell them, hey, shut the hell up. Do the quiet and let me speak. And let me act. You cannot belittle me. It's not like the debate you see in American politics. One person is loud without fact. Another person is quiet with fact and credibility. An awesome work behind his record. Somebody will be insulting you, disrespecting you, and the person is, uh, 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 I don't understand. That's why I call some of the best people I know in America and I ask them, what is the standard of communication in America? Indians are known to be very loud. They are loud people, Indians from India. The Chinese are extremely loud. The Koreans are loud. The Japanese are calm and low. Low key. They don't want to offend. 
The Canadians never offend. Don't ever raise your voice at Canadians. They don't like it. So there is a trend, a pattern that describes communication culture. Africans, some of them, are very loud. Others, low-key. Jamaicans are loud. Puerto Ricans are loud. And there are a lot of others who are calm and gentle. So I've been asking, what is the pattern? And I'm learning a lot. Europeans, they don't like loudness. Why? Because they are not a feeling people. F-E-E-L-I-N-G. They are fact-checking people. Europeans, including English, the English, the Scottish. They don't go by loudness. They go by checking the facts. That's why a lot of politicians have learned how to steal and do bad things in America, how to lie, misrepresent the truth. Do I really care about them? I don't. Politicians are the last people that I ever think about. I don't care about them because it's another, another pig. It's a group of pigs in the puddle. That's it. Vivian, if you have that reading, read it to me about the group of people who are in the pig business. <laughs> when you find it, you read it. Okay. When you find it, you read it. Let me keep speaking. Just stop me. So, so people, don't spend... I have it. Oh, okay. So people, don't spend your time with people who disrespect you, mock you. That's why God said to Abraham, those who make little of you, make a joke of who you are and the gift you are naturally gifted and the gift that I have endowed you with. I also make a mess of them if they try to make a mess of you. So don't allow anyone to disrespect you and dishonor you. In my family, somebody cried few days ago and said to me all these years when my family back in Africa we never had money we were poor where, where were those people who now want to rally around you both from your mother's side both from your father's side and outside have they ever given a loaf of bread to any of my siblings or to my mother? Have they ever traveled to the village? Have they ever supported us? And the answer was no. And I saw my siblings cry when they spoke this to me. They broke down and just cried. And that's why I just blocked everybody. When I saw my siblings cry because they remember the past. They remember people who are calling me and asking me for money, who when they were rich, did not help our family. Never gave them a dime. Never supported us in any way. And my siblings were crying. And they said, brother, stop. Don't help them anymore. They don't deserve it anymore. We know that you use money to find out who is who. And that is true. Because money is our money is our own say. Money does not just talk, but money will expose you. If you try to find out who a person is, you cannot give that person money. What is their real character, their real conduct, the real church inside them? The good, the bad, and the ugly will surface. When once money is in their hand, you will know who they are. And don't let them talk you out of what you see. 
Because while you are seeing their behavior, they are trying to tell you it's not really what you think. It is exactly what I think. My own siblings were crying. Said, so you see these people, they never gave us a dime. Not even a dime. They came to the village, they saw my mom suffering. They won't even give my mother a little piece of land to make a farm. To make her farm. I'm serious. That's how serious why they were weeping and crying. I just went, just went online, just went to my WhatsApp, went everywhere and blocked everyone that they mentioned their names. I just blocked them. I told my sibling, I use money to find out who a person is. For example, I have given money to some people and I've waited to see whether they will take a little bit of the money that I've generously given to them to when they are going to the village, whether they will buy something and give to my mother or to my siblings. They never did. And they came back to get more from me. And my siblings said, you've already done your job. Now you, you see who they are? We told you. And I closed that chapter. Nobody, nobody will come to me and say that I did not try for everybody in my lineage and outside. I did. You use money to know what is the content of somebody's heart, somebody's mindset. That's what you use money for. And of course, you use money to do other things with human beings. Why? Because how money bo. Money will open doors about people's character and lives and how they react to life. People can tell you all the lies they want. Let money change its hand, then you will know their true character. They cannot hide. Money reveals. Give people a job to do for you, then you will know who they are. So you give them money, you give them something to do for you, and you see whether they'll be able to execute it. That's how you know who they are. Jesus moved away from where he was not recognized, from where he couldn't be rewarded. They say he only did a few tiny, healed, little bit of headache here and there. Lay his hand on few sick people. And then he moved to somewhere else where he was needed. Don't spend one more day working for somebody that doesn't need you. Somebody that tolerates you. You are better than what people have been thinking about you. People really have made up their mind that you are worthless and useless. And that you don't fit in. That you are not a banker. You don't work for the oil company. You are not a lawyer and a judge. You are not a politician. You are not a greedy pastor or priest or bishop. You are not a, a, a good business man or woman. You are not a professor in a university. A middle class person. High, low or medium middle class. You are not a nurse. You are not into health care. People have written you off. There's no way you'll be able to make it in life. Nothing. That's how they look at you. You don't come from a rich family. So, who are you? You are a nobody. Go and look at how people treat you. People treat you terribly because they think you don't have money. They think you don't have no education. They think you don't have no business. I like when I take people to go and eat. I like to see the way they treat the waiters. Because that's the way they're going to treat me and treat my business or my mission. 
there are people who are humble because they're in front of money. I am that money. I'm going to pay for all this. So they are humble. Pick me. They don't honor. They respect. When a waiter brings me water with a straw, mackerel or tuna or sudden oh thank you so much what a wonderful person you are and i watch the other person who is eating with me they don't pay no attention to the waiter I'll find a way for that encounter to come to an end. I want you to focus on happiness. That's what I've been sent to do on the earth. Sad people. Sad people don't go to heaven. Sad people. Kind of a human being. Somebody who is not fun to be around other people. Somebody who find fault at every human being. What kind of, what kind of, why do you want that? My job is happiness. How to put happiness back into your brain. How to make your mindset to be a happy mindset. So that you can function properly. So that your gift will become profitable and rewarded. That's my job on the earth. That's why it is on focus on happiness. Focus on happiness. You can never be happy if you don't have money. You can never be happy if you don't have health. You can never be happy if you do not have material wealth. You can never be happy if you don't have Jesus. You can never be happy if you don't have the Holy Spirit in his fullness and power. You can never be happy if you don't have Abounding with God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You can never be happy if you don't have mission of the angels. You can never be happy if the saints above are not watching over you and participating in your mission on the earth. You can never be happy if you get married to a sad and grieving and complaining and whining husband or wife who mock you before outsiders and insiders compete with you. Same thing a woman does to a man. Focus on what creates happiness. I'm not talking of you being on drug or on sex pills or going to watch movie 24-7. That's not what happiness is about. Do you know how happy I am today to receive deeds to some land that I purchased? A few months back, I finally got it. Do you know what happiness that does to me? Do you know what happiness that does to me? Yeah. When I woke up in the morning and realized suddenly I have a phone call, the prayer I prayed seven years ago has been answered immediately. Hallelujah. I'm happy. I'm blessed. Amen. 
I'm lucky. Amen. Do you know how sad I was Amen. when Yvonne, who is shouting Amen, came to me and said, Look, all the money I make, I use it to pay for my place where I go to braid hair. And I said, let's, let's think about it. And both of us, we brainstormed. She also went to Mr. Anderson and they brainstormed her husband. And what the three of us come up with? Do it at your front porch. Go and talk to your landlord. She said, I will. And I said, I'll back it up with prayers. And she went and he did. So that she does not pay. You make a thousand dollars a day. And you end up giving 800 away. What kind of job is that? It's like the Vietnamese people who came to me and said, they are going to buy a nail saloon. I said, okay. I said, where is this nail saloon? They say El Dorado. I've never been to El Dorado. I don't know where that is. It's here in Kansas. So I said, okay, good luck. They say, you luck us very good. I say, yep, you know what they mean by that, that I should make them very lucky. That's what they mean by you luck us very well. I said, me not luck till me know. I'm not making anybody lucky until I know the detail about what you are going to buy, whether you succeed or not. They say, no, lock now. I say, no. So I say, I'm not making nobody lucky until we go to the, we get to the nitty gritty of whether you guys buy it or not, and whether you want it or not. They went, they make an offer, it was accepted. They were very happy. They started talking to the bank to give them loan. I said, you guys can come to me. I'll give you the loan. And this is what you pay for it. It's cheaper than the bank. They said, okay, we will come to you. But let's talk with the owner first about how much we pay for electricity, for water, for trash, for this, for that, and for where the thing is situated. Yeah, we the business place. So the owner gave them a list of what they will be paying each month. They look at the list. The owner invited them. They sat down and the owner talked to them. They asked the owner, can the electric company come down on this? The owner said, no. Can the water company come down? The owner said, what about the trash? He said, this is what I've been. Everybody's paying the same thing in this, in this outlet. So they look at how much they'll be paying. And then they asked the woman who owned the place, who wanted to send it to them, how much were you, were, uh, were you making each month? The lady told them, this is a thing that I told them to go and find out before I lock them. Lock means make them lucky. That's the way they speak. So now, I told them to focus on the detail. Focus on the detail. Now they now saw the detail. They now came knocking on, uh, on my house, came with their with their uh, family members and they sat down at the front porch and they said to me, I said, yeah, you come for luck now? Me lock everybody, go walk El Dorado? They say, oh no, not luck anymore. We don't need now. I say, why? Why you don't want? They say, we no buy. We, we said no, not buy, no, no buy, no nail. No buy, no nail saloon. I say, why not buy? He said, eh, eh. Uh, they, they took a paper and gave to me and said, look, look paper. Yeah? Every month, pay, 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 which means you pay, you pay, you pay, you pay. So many things, pay, 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 pay. Uh, uh, month, month finish, month finish, money make you, you pay, 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 electric, pay a lot, water, pay a lot, trash, pay a lot. Owner, owner, owner building, pay a lot. Uh, very little money, uh, not enough pay insurance, not enough put gas, not enough pay me, not enough pay people, not enough anything. Pay, 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 pay. We don't want too much pay. And they run away. I say, you want more customer come? They say, no. Even more customer come? Same thing. Tax, 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 tax. Pay, 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 pay. We don't want any more. 
We we work we work for family. We don't want. He take girl. He take uh, uh, the the little the little girl that follow them says, pay 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 lot. Oh na take nail saloon go hell. Me no worry. <laughs> <laughs> He said, Sela, Sela can take nail saloon and go to hell, you know? He said, no, me no want. Oh, I take saloon, go hell, me don't care, you know? Me very angry, angry a lot, you know? Why pay, pay, pay a lot? No money. <laughs> oh, gosh. Say, oh, I take saloon, go hell, me don't care, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh before you step out to accept a job to start a business make sure that you feel the vibe of the place you feel the vibe you feel the vibe of the place does it match your vibration number two do you have favor in that thing? Do you have favor? I remember where I used to live, the apartment I used to live before we bought this property. How I knew. The military lady that was a friend of mine that helped find, find that place. After she found it, I went and prayed. I said, God, is it the right location? I realized number one, yes, it's centrally. The post office is right there. The bank is right there. The hospital where my doctor is, is right there. Everything was just around me. The water, I love water around me. The water and the quack quacks were everywhere. And the geese were all around me. The owl that come with the wife to fish, right there was in front of me in the night. They will come to fish in the night. Some of you, you hear the owl tooting. You, 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 you run. You think it's witchcraft. Allow animals to be animals and let witches be witches. Come on. Everything that I wanted was around me. And then I approached the owners. They told me that I can live there for two months free. They gave me two months free. Free rent. Two months Two bedroom apartments, almost three, with additional room for closet and for laundry, all inside. I said, good. I can't be anywhere without a big bathtub, without a good bathtub. I can be without a shower, but a bathtub, mm -mm, that's... That's no compromise. Everything I needed was there. There was a zoo across the water from me. I can watch people selling their boat, S-A-I-L-I-N-G. They are riding their boats, drive from my window. I can sit in my front porch and I'll be fishing in the water. The water is right there in front of me. And then the power company gave me two months free. Cox Communication, the television, uh, uh, the cable company gave me two months free. The internet gave me two months free. That's how I knew this is favor. Go to where there is favor. Don't stay with miserable people. Do not do it. Don't stay with people who always want to say something. I don't like those kind of people. People who always want to say something. I want sometimes be around me, say nothing. Your presence is far more important to me than what you are saying. That's why the greatest gift you can bring to somebody who is in pain, who is sick, is just stand there, hold your hands, and be quiet. 
Don't say nothing. Saying something sometimes reveals how stupid you are that you have nothing to offer. Jesus left that place. He wasn't welcome. Many of you will go to quarrel. Many of you will start a drama. When I look at the internet, when I look at TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, you will see some um, pastors and some witch doctors. And because somebody wrote something about them, or somebody reacted to what they said, or what they did, or what they saw about them, you see them come out swinging. Who are you swinging at? Do you even know these people who you think are attacking you? No. You don't even know who the hell they are. If you don't want people to say something or write something about you, don't don't put yourself in the social media. Because people are going to say something. And you see them attacking people. And normally those kind of people who do that, who come swinging against people that they feel offended them, attack them, they don't last long. They disappear from history. Either they die out or people move away from them. Or people come to kidnap them physically. I saw one native doctor or witch doctor or whatever the, or whatever the person is was talking rubbish about people that he's going to send people of his community to go and attack all those people who are writing and saying stupid things about him in the internet. Now, why did you carry yourself to the internet if you did not know that that is what will happen? It wasn't long kidnappers came and kidnapped him to tell him that he's a nobody and killed two of his security guards. It's about time that you know that you, you should shut up if people write things about you, don't react to it. Don't say anything. Do not say anything. That's how we know that you are an adult. Keep doing what you are doing. The good things you are doing, keep doing it. Don't pay them no attention. It shows you are a kid. Anybody who write or say anything about me, I don't even pay them attention. I don't even read what they say. Why do I even have time for that nonsense? I have a child in Norway called Sally. I have to raise a little girl. On October 29, a few years back, I had Isaac, Kishon's son, my grandson on my, on my shoulder, and I was having a prayer camp meeting, worldwide prayer camp meeting. Worldwide conference. And at the same time, I was checking on Anne, Anne because Anne was pregnant with Sally. Look at all these kids around me. I have to give them a future. I, don't, I, I didn't have kids and I did not inherit kids, adopt kids, so that they can take care of me. I have them so that I can pass my genius, so that I can pass money and wealth to them. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. People want children so that children can take care of them. What they cannot become, their children will become. If you couldn't become a lawyer, your child will become a lawyer. If you could not be a politician, your child will become a politician. Really? Is that what it comes to be? Abraham is to wait for Isaac. Are you serious? For him and God to do what they have to do in his own generation. He used to wait for Isaac to come and accomplish what Abraham should accomplish. Is Isaac is going to be waiting for, for Jacob. Jacob is going to be waiting for Joseph. Are you serious? Moses will wait until his children grew up to become the savior of Israel. Are you serious? What you have to do in your generation is you who is going to do it, not your children. Many of you will have resigned that you are going to be grandparents. That's, your, that's now your calling is to become grandparents. And you retire. And some of you, you have not even entered into what you came to do. Your purpose is not even done. 
You don't even know it. That's why God saw the humility of who Abraham can be. And God went to him and said, Man, yes, you are retired by age. But in terms of your purpose on earth, you've not even started. He said, are you serious? God said, yep. I'm going to restart you all over. That's the meaning of Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. I'm going to restart you all over because you've not yet even started. Moses at the age of 80 has not yet even started. Aaron at the age of 83 or 85 or what has not yet even started. And God has to come and restart elderly people who thought that they've already finished their job on the earth and they have not yet even done a single thing. And they thought they have. Begin tonight to ask God to restart you if you don't know what you came to do. Begin to ask God for the right location. Begin to ask God that your gift should work for you, not the gift of your children. Many of you are waiting for your children to grow up to come and build you a house, buy you a car, and then you celebrate, ah, that is uh, mama, mama, mama this and mama that, papa this and papa that. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. That's not what you, you should be ashamed of yourself if that's the reason why you decided to go and pregnant somebody or you decided to, to be pregnant or you decided to get married. It's because you are looking for help from children to be born. I'm not looking for no help from any child. Children are needing help from me. Jesus moved away and carried out his vocation, carried out his job somewhere else where he is needed, where he is resourced, where the people are partners in progress with him, according to the epistle to the Philippians. Partners in progress. Where people understand his mission. Where you are with the right in the right location with the right kind of people. Who will reward you with quality cars and houses. Pay you big money. In fact, they don't pay you money. They simply, they simply supply you with money and material resources. That's what you need. It's not a place where you go to stand in the line and wait all day to see a doctor. You are in a place where the doctor is practicing in a clinic of his or her own. And you go there to go and meet the person. 20 minutes later, you are done. You are, you've got your pres pres prescription and goes where they have connection. That clinic has connection. Medicine that costs $1,000, you are buying it for $10. Why? Because you are connected to that clinic and to that doctor. That's what I enjoy in the city where I live. That's also what I enjoy when I am in my state in California. I enjoy these kind of privileges. That's where, what I enjoy when I am in New York. It's easy to navigate things. It's easy to have what I want. I want to see a doctor in New York or California just like that. Bam! I tell them, I'm coming to see you. The doctor say, oh, I'll make a place for you. Come and see me and so on and so on. And the same day, not tomorrow, that same day, even if that doctor is about to close, he'll tell me I'm waiting for you. Dude, I'm waiting for you. Show up. And I will show up. And boom, 10, 20, 30 minutes, examine me accurately. Accurately. That's what I enjoy in New York. That's what I enjoy in California. That's what I enjoy in Kansas. It's easy for me to navigate, to have my way. Stop quarreling with people because of what they say, because they didn't like you. Many of you go into marriages, it didn't work out. You stay there and suck and suck and suck. Quarreling, you've been betrayed, you were cheated on. Oh, thank you so much for cheating on me. You reveal who you are. Do I really care about the cheating? Nope. I pick my destiny and move on. You are not going to stand between me and the best thing that is waiting for me. 
and you are there crying and telling some stupid stories about how they did this to you, how they did that to you. Do you think I have time for that nonsense? Because you put all your heart into it. Yes, your heart is into something, but you are open in case there is anything that goes wrong, you know what to do. You are prepared for all this. Vivian, read that thing to read that thing for us, please, my my lovely one. Read it to us. Politicians. Politicians. Religion. Religious leaders. Religion. Religion. Mm -hmm. yes. Business and money. Business and money. Is a game. And also, I want you to add marriages and relationship. Add that, and then you read it to us. Marriages and relationships. Politics, religion, business, money, marriages, and relationships is a game of pigs. It's, a, it's a game of pigs. Pigs. P I G S. Pigs. Oink, oink. Continue. And if you do not want to be a pig, if you do not want to be a pig, if you do not want to be a pig, do not ever get involved in these things. Wow. Do you get it? Wow. Yes. Politics is a game of oink oink, game of pigs. Wow. Religion is a game of pigs. Money, business, and investment is a game of pigs. P I G S. Marriage. And relationship. relationship and dating, put dating there is okay. Uh -huh. Put dating there too. Marriage, mm -hmm. dating, and relationship is a game of pigs. If you do not want to be a pig, don't get involved in these things. Get don't get involved, don't ever mm -hmm. get involved because it's a dirty game, it's dirty. Wow. It's a game of pigs. Thank you, Bishop. Yeah. You have to wallow in the dirt. D-I-R-T. In the dust. In the trash. And pigs love it. <laughs> and that's what this is about. You want to get into a marriage, you are, not, you are not prepared for warfare. All that marriage that looked like sweet... They are putting cake in your mouth and honey and sugar. And you are smiling and loving it. Don't worry. When problems start, you will know. That cake will taste like bitter leaf. <laughs> Can you go to court and fight? And fight somebody else? And win a case? You are there accepting cake. And you are not prepared for war. Marriage is a game of pigs. Dating, relationship is all a game of pigs. The same beautiful person, when they turn on you, you will know that it's a game of pigs. Are you ready to play what the game of pigs? You are not. Then stop. There was one man that walks into the office of one of our bishops and they asked him why he want to be a priest. Why he want uh, to go into holy orders. He said it's a very peaceful, very peaceful vocation, very peaceful work. You know, pastors, uh, you preach, you counsel, you do all of that, you know. It's a peaceful job, uh, and so on. And the bishop looked at him and said, Who told you that? That bishop asked him, Who told you that? He said, Let me tell you if you did not know. Are you prepared for high blood pressure and for stroke and to carry great burdens? The guy said, No. He said, That's what this job is about. Say, this is war. 
It's a game of warfare. What you see is the other side of what we do. You don't really see what we do. So if you are not prepared for war, don't come to become a priest. I want you to value yourself. Begin to value yourself. Begin to value what you bring to the table. Be able to speak out for yourself. I'm going to, I'm going to say this. I'm not supposed to say it, but I will. If America really loves itself as a nation, Biden and Trump should not contest for election 2024. The year 2024 is not for men to contest election. The year 2024, the election is for women. Two women from two pol political groups should contest the election. Let me give you an example of what heaven told me. So that nobody says I did not say it. Because there is a part of me that is a seer. S-E-E-R. Not just a prophet. I'm not a prophet. I'm a seer. I followed in both Christian tradition and native tradition and it all is in me. I have been instructed by the living God and the earth vibrate with what they have heard. The water vibrate. The sun, S-U-N, vibrate. The wind vibrate with this same information that I'm about to tell you. We need two women. We already got them. We had Nikki Haley's. And then Democrats should give us somebody else. Not Kamala Harris. Harris. No. We need another woman to go and face Nikki Haley's. Let the country choose one or the other. Because Trump has Alzheimer. Joe Biden has dementia. That's it. One is a good communicator and a shouter, no facts. Can lead the people astray. Goes by his feeling. Can start war at any time. Vendata, very vengeful. For no reason. Does not belong to leadership. Joe Biden got the goods. But is not a communicator. Cannot communicate. Sometimes people don't hear what he's saying. All this is happening because the agenda is not for men. This is about 20 years ago that I was told this. When I was told that people of African ancestry would begin to become leaders in America, I began to talk about it. One year later, Obama was president. Few years later, you have Miss Harris as vice president. Right now, heaven is telling me to tell the American people that let the let Republican give us a woman to contest for the presidency, and let the Democrat give us a woman to contest for the presidency. That if they fail to do that, they will have themselves to blame. They will have themselves, the two parties will have themselves to plan if anything happens to this country. If this country loses its value and its place and the, Amer and the, and the dollar be ceases to be the currency of world markets, let America hold the Republican Party and the Democrat Party and its leadership as the source of it. This is not about who is eloquent. And this is not about who is who cannot fight back. This is about that both of them should not contest. Both of them should be out of the game. They've, this is this is not favorable to men. People, there is what we call spiritual counsel. There are unseen beings that are in charge of earthly beings 
and earthly life and earthly powers and all of them are aware that this country called the United States of America has been summoned by heavens and by the earth They've been summoned by the world of the waters. They've been summoned by the world of, the, of those under the earth. They've been summoned by the wind, Ikuku. They've been summoned by the sun and the moon and planets and all that is in it. They are all aware of this. It's an open thing in the open library of the, of the universe that two women should contest for the election not two elderly men. That's it. I've told you guys what it is. I don't know why people find it difficult to let women try something. Because I've been told when once one woman is chosen, whether she's a Republican or whether she's a Democrat, the change that Obama was talking, that change has come to America Change has not yet come to America. That's when the change will come to America. Because America is looking for a mom, a mother. Israel changed when, what is her name? Um, Deborah rose up as a mother in Israel. Go and read the book of Judges. I've read it over and over. The Holy Spirit keep taking me back to Deborah. A mother, until a mother rose in Israel, then Israel began to win war. So it's not a matter of saying, if I'm elected a president, I'm going to stop the war between Ukraine and, uh, and Russia. That's not what it is. The real agenda is that a woman, a woman, a female gender, should lead America. From November 2024. And if America ceases, the punishment will be severe. Whoever is going to run, they are going to see. They are going to see plagues upon plagues. It will let me tell you how this thing works. Hey. You don't play with them. You don't play with ghosts. I finished talking. Because they will keep coming until this country allow a woman to be a president and there's a reason why there's a reason why a female must be allowed to be a president so if america like let them listen if not if not that's their problem this is my country and i'm just telling it as it is i'm not paid for this i'm simply i'm simply letting my conscience be free the heaven sees i've said what they've asked me to come and tell the country is the next three, four months will be having an election. And right here, we are in this chaos. Trump does not qualify to run the country. And Biden doesn't qualify either. Why? Both of them have been disqualified by the powers of the heavens and the earth. If you like to listen, listen. Both of them have been disqualified. None of them is qualified. It is women who are qualified. Nikki Hellis is qualified. Miss Harris is not qualified. The vice president is not qualified to stand for election. She's been rejected. So Democrat has other women. Nancy Pelosi should not try it. She should never, never step into that position. It's not for her. Is for somebody else that is younger like Nikki Ellis. I'm just saying it and I mean it and it comes from the bottom of my heart. This is not mine. This is what the spiritual council of heaven and earth, they all know about this. The forces, the principalities, the powers, the dominions, they all know this. We overripe. A woman need to come and try for us. A woman need to come and lead us. Even if it is once, and you are going to see a major shift in American foreign policy, domestic policy, things are going to change very, very quickly. What we are dreaming of, the kind of leadership we are looking for, 
will come of its own. Without no January 6th kind of events, that's what we are going to see. And I do not want you women to be bribed by men. Because men are going to talk you out of it. And I want you to say no. This is heavy stuff. But that's what it is. That's why along the way I'm going to hold an international conference for the agenda of God for women. I'm going to have it. And let women come from all over the world and come and listen to what God said I should tell the women. It's long overdue. If you want peace in this generation, elect a woman, even if it's for once in your country. Let a woman handle leadership. Even if it is for once. That's it. Let the men sit back and watch. And let the women rule and lead. Let the men follow. Women have followed for too long. God has put special powers on women in our generation. We should give them that opportunity. Let's not continue in this thing we are doing. It's not working. Men after men after men after men. They are women who have the gift, the anointing, the powers, the education, the experience. Like Nikki Hellis and like other women in waiting who belong to the Democrat Party. When are we going to listen to the voice of wisdom? When are we going to listen to the voice of God? When are we going to accept a mother to arrive in Israel? To arise. A-R-I-S-E. To arise in America. When? When? I want you to pray tonight that God will give you that kind of mentality not to be offended easily. Not to be offended at all by what anybody says, anybody write, anybody think of you. Why? Because there's a lot that is in you. There's a lot that is in you. A lot. A lot of good things about you. And as the year comes and goes, you are going to see more and more manifestation of the better part of you. People are going to say, wow, is it Mary Mary? Is it Vigal? Is it Leona? Is it Yvonne? Is it Ozo? Is it Emily? Is it Juliet? How come they changed? It's because who they are is in fruition is fruiting God is harvesting out of you I want you to begin to pray right now as I'm talking to you as I'm talking to you there are 65 human beings from different nations who are going to benefit directly from this service the word, the water the spirit and the blood is following this service and has gone out. These are living entities that have gone out to heal people, to make people rich, to start businesses, revive old businesses, change lives. I want you to begin to pray and to tell God, don't allow me to be where people tolerate me. Please put me where I will be loved, cared for, and mightily rewarded. Begin to pray. When you pray enough, go home. I'm looking for people who will send me a $1,000 seed. Looking for people who will send me a $1,000 seed. Because I have a project in India. I have a project in Trinidad and especially in Tobago. I have a project in Jamaica. I have a project going on in Bahamas, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic. I have project going on in Jamaica. I have project in Ghana. I have project in Norway. I have project in England. I have several projects in Africa. I need people to support the project that we are doing. Please do. Do not close your heart to what we are doing. Send me money so that I can bypass bureaucracy. I can bypass meetings. 
and directly champion different projects that will help human beings. Contact us at idikaimeriministry.com. Send us direct email, idikaimeriorganization at gmail.com. Or you also send it to idikaimeri2000 at gmail.com. Send it to us. If you want to, if you want, just go to our website, idikaimeriministry.com. You will see our contact information. If you want to send a check, a money order, you send it to us. But it's a warning. Don't send us anything that is fake. Because what follows me will come after you. And you will not like it. So this is not a game. Even if you are a Yahoo boy. What we mean by Yahoo boy is a scammer. A scammer or a con artist. And you think this is fun. And you think you've gone to a witch doctor to make juju for you to scam. Please don't come near what I do. I don't want you to get hurt. Because what follows me blesses people and also do hurt people. The, the affliction you and your family and your generation will go through is, 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 is something that you don't want. You don't want to be told. Please don't try it. Do not ever try it because even the demon that they are going to send to do the job for you knows better who I am. They know the kind of family I come from. And they know the kind of God that I follow. And the kind of Jesus I follow. And the kind of Holy Ghost I follow. And the kind of God the Father that I follow. So don't even try to scam. Or to send me anything that is fake. Don't even try it. Because the suffering will be too much for you. It can even kill you. So if you want to send money, send money. If you are sending checks, send checks. If you are sending money order, send money order. If you are going to do it by Zelle, Z-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, do it. Cash app, do it. PayPal, do it. We are waiting for you. Thank you very much. Everybody begin to pray. Unmute yourself and begin to pray that God will give you big money. That your gift, your gift is so big even if it looks so tiny. Even if it looks so tiny, your gift is big. Begin to pray that your gift Boss out and begin to make you big money. Begin to pray. All this begin to pray loud. If you wanna pray in tongues, if you wanna pray in spirit language, please begin to pray. Yeah. If you have your sherry mama, begin to pray your sherry mama. <laughs> Please make sure that you use this video for your morning prayers. Use this video. To manifest great things. Bye bye. Manifest those things for them to come about. Don't be to recognize 